Good morning. I wanted to share some software that I created that combines lasers with cryptocurrency. Two awesome things, even better when you put them together. Um, so what I'm talking about specifically are these um, plastic paper wallets. So um, a lot of people are familiar with the concept of a paper wallet, but really quickly let me show you what that is. This is this is just a, a, a PVC plastic business card. They're used for like name tags. And I was able to etch those QR codes into the plastic with a cheap laser etcher. And uh, so let me show you sort of the outline of what I'm going to present. Um, I'm going to discuss the laser engraver and the parts and the settings for the people who are more interested in the laser engraver uh, and the specific settings I use to accomplish this. And then I'll talk about like the different use cases uh, and, and the, the more crypto aspect to it. And I'll walk through the software, how to, how to use it and where to find it. <clears throat> so uh, to start with, um, I purchased... Um, this $150 laser engraver um, it's uh, got a 3 watt uh, laser and uh, it can etch into wood and uh, I started looking at this and wondering if it could etch into plastic and then I got a stack of these PVC business cards like a hundred of them for 11 bucks and um, what I did is uh, and I captured this in this is the repository, the software I'm going to show how to create the artwork um, for these paper wallets or plastic wallets. And if, you, if you're totally unfamiliar with what a paper wallet is, go to paperwallet.bitcoin.com and you can generate a, a paper wallet. You just uh, got to wiggle your, wiggle your mouse around here, get to 100%. Almost there. And this will generate a paper wallet for you. And what it is, is it's a public address that you can send Bitcoin Cash to. And then there's a private key that you can retrieve the money with. And so doing this gets the cryptocurrency off of your app and onto a physical object that, that more people are comfortable with. Like that, and then you can store it like gold or guns or any other valuable thing that you would keep in a safe. So that's, that's what a paper wallet is. Let's get back to the, the laser engraving. So I had this machine, and I got these cards. And if you go to uh, GitHub slash Chris Troutner slash Plastic Wallet, this is the software I used to generate the artwork. And if you scroll to the bottom, um, you, this, this has links to uh, the plastic cards and the laser engraver. Here's a screenshot of what the software looks like um, for controlling the engraver. And um, the, I did a whole bunch of tests, and these were the best settings I found for this application. Is I set the power at 35%, and I set the depth at 37%, and um, these cards are, are pretty glossy, and so I sanded them down with 80 grit sandpaper. I need to add those details here uh, before I engraved them, and that, that uh, made it much more effective. Um, so that's the that's the secret sauce if you want to produce them uh, yourself the laser engraver set it these settings and sand those PVC plastic cards down with 80 grit sandpaper before uh, before you etch them uh, okay so that covers the details on the laser engraver let's talk about use cases so um, these things are valuable because uh, uh, for a few different reasons. Um, first of all, paper wallets in general are really valuable for onboarding, um, especially in this case where, uh, you know, it's, it's just a plastic card and I can just give this to somebody and then they have it and they can do whatever they want with it and they don't have to download an app and it, it's much faster, uh, no batteries required. And uh, that's what's nice about the onboarding process. And uh, so I found paper wallets to be one of the best ways to onboard people into cryptocurrency. This makes it super easy to give it away as gifts 
to fans and a, fa- a family and friends. Um, and then I'm going to talk about a controversial use case. But first of all, let's talk about a non-controversial use case, and that is the savings crisis um, with the uh, m- massive money printing going on. Uh, there are no interest rates anymore. And this is a huge tax on savers, which is a big problem because of the baby boomers retiring right now who need their savings. So, t- you know, a typical uh, retirement strategy would be to take your, your retirement and buy treasury bonds with it or, or, or corporate bonds with it and then live off the interest. But that's not possible today because there is no interest. Um, and so it's a big tax on savers. And... So these plastic cards are a great way to get into the cryptocurrency, diversify your portfolio, and um, and you can treat it just like you treat gold. You can put it in your safe. No no software required. Um, these uh, what 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 I have on these cards is one side is the public address. And so this QR code is what you would scan with, say, the Badger wallet or your Bitcoin.com wallet or your Electron Cash wallet, and you send the money there. And in case this gets damaged or you don't, you know, you just don't want to deal with QR codes, um, everything, this QR code encodes the, this string of addresses. This is the, these characters are what's encoded in this, in this uh, QR code. And so you can send money to this, and you don't have to put them both on on one card. This was more difficult, and and, uh, once I got dialed in with those settings, it wasn't that hard. But you could put this on two cards. And so this public key is perfectly fine to share with everybody. You can keep this in your wallet. If anybody wants to give you some cryptocurrency, you can whip it out and be like, yeah, here you go, send it right here. But then this private key... Uh, is what you want to keep secret. This is what you want to keep in your safe, and uh, and you don't want to share it with people. And again, it's just the QR code, and then the characters next to it are the, is the data that's in the QR code. So that way, you, it's just redundant. If you want to manually type it in to recover the money, you can. And this is what you would sweep with, say, a Bitcoin.com wallet app or the Badger wallet app um, or, or the Electron Cash desktop app. Um, they're all capable of scanning that QR code and retrieving the money from the Bitcoin Cash blockchain with it. Um, I put a dollar onto this address, and so the first person who scans this QR code uh, can claim that dollar. And uh, so that's a really positive use case, giving away as gifts and using it as a savings vehicle because, let's face it, the, the facts are that Bitcoin has been the... Um, most performant asset over the last decade um, compared to everything. And uh, um, But let's talk about another use case, which is the real reason why I, I made this. <clears throat> there were two... Uh, oh, and, and on the topic of the savings crisis, if you want to know more, this YouTube video, Real Vision, is, uh, is doing an excellent job of, of capturing the data and exploring the issues around uh, the financial system, and in particular this one, uh, how unfunded pensions will destroy your retirement, is uh, uh, sort of their opus magnum. It's, uh, it's a great, uh, really great video that, br- that breaks down the, the current savings crisis uh, facing the baby boomer generation. But <clears throat> these are a couple of news items that were in the news recently. Uh, this guy um, had a Bitcoin mixer, and uh, the Justice Department decided to call that money laundering, which is, I think, a pretty controversial concept. And um, it doesn't really matter because men with guns kidnapped him and uh, took all of his stuff and uh, threw him in jail, and it was all sanctioned by the state. So I guess they need to just figure figure. I, I don't know how the dust is going to settle on that, but that's the actions that have taken place. And what's a bummer is that they confiscated all his stuff, so I don't know if he is going to have any Bitcoin when he comes out of jail, um, one way or the other, whether he's found guilty or innocent. And again, here in Ireland, um, someone was growing like a half a million dollars worth of pot, marijuana, 
which was, you know, uh, of course that number's inflated. It was probably much, much less than that. Um, and they just happened to find 6,000 BTC, so like $50 million, because this guy was clearly like an early Bitcoin investor, and they confiscated it. So uh, that sucks. And uh, Bitcoin is supposed to be unconfiscatable. But here's the deal. It's only potentially unconfiscatable if you take the steps to prevent it from being confiscated. So the reason, so I, these, these news articles came up and, uh, you know, whether you think the actions by the men with guns was justified or not, uh, that's up to you to decide. But, uh, what I was thinking is like, man, Bitcoin's supposed to be unconfiscatable, but clearly it's not because these guys are getting their Bitcoin confiscated. Uh, so in these situations and as I believe the financial system um, degrades and uh, in these sorts of actions by the men with guns uh, escalate, uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could bury your cryptocurrency like gold? You know, like bury it out in the woods somewhere so you're the only one who knows uh, where it is. Uh, and so that way, if, if anything ever happened to you, uh, hopefully you'd get you know out of the cage and you'd have something to uh, to to get to have or if you are thrown in a cage maybe you could communicate to a loved one and to get the the financial resources needed to fight your legal case um that would be really nice and so that's why i created these um the paper wallets are nice but they're paper this is plastic doesn't care if it gets wet i can bury this in the ground and i can dig it up 20 years later and wash it off and it's going to be fine and uh so this is a very cheap way to make your Bitcoin actually unconfiscatable. <clears throat> and just to be clear, this is Bitcoin Cash. Um, if you want it for BTC, you'll have to figure out how to do that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the software. Um, again, it's at github.com slash Chris Troutner slash plastic wallet. You can probably just do a search for plastic wallet, uh, or my name, Chris Troutner, and um, so this is written in Node.js JavaScript. Here's the installation instructions. You want to run this command to clone this repository. Go into the directory, run npm install. If you don't know Node, you can click here and install Node and npm. Uh, npm install the the dependencies, and I'm going to show you how it works here. So uh, uh, this is as if I just went through these two steps to install everything. Oh, sorry, these, these two steps to install everything. Uh, I'm going to run generate wallet to generate a new wallet. <clears throat> and it's going to ask you two questions. Uh, what language do you want to use? And in this case, it's English. I'm just going to hit enter. And then how many uh, children do you want? And that's like how many paper wallets do you want to produce? So I'll say I want to produce five. <clears throat> so it's going to generate a new Bitcoin Cash wallet. And if you go into the output directory, wallets, it's right there, this wallet.json file. And so that's the information that it needs, this 12-word mnemonic, and the derivation path, and the number of children. Uh, and then the second step is to run npm run create, which will actually produce the artwork. So there it's generating the five paper wallets. And the output is in output HTML. And there's the, the paper wallets. And if I navigate to them, um, There we go. 
So this is what it looks like, and uh, so then you can screenshot it. Uh, it looks huge because it's better to be big than small. And then open up uh, <clears throat> some image editing software. And then o open the, let's see, pictures. <clears throat> there we go. And then just crop, crop it. And there you go. And then you can export this as a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, and then uh, import it into the um, encryption, or not the encryption, the uh, engraving software. And away you go. You can see these are the settings I typically use. And, uh, and there you go. Um, that's how you make a plastic wallet that you can then bury and uh, keep your wallet safe. And again, just to reemphasize, these public... Man. That was private. I'm going to go public. Uh, okay, so th it generates a private and public key pair. And so these, and it also does a serial number just so you can easily keep them tra tracked. So this is uh, just a random number that it generated, and it's 000, uh, and this is 000. So this is the private key that goes with this public address. And you don't have to do them on the same card, you could do separate cards. And the public card, you can, you can share uh, the, the, the public address, and that's fine to, to you could, if you're a merchant, you could put this in your window, or you could leave it on the counter. Uh, you know, it's fine to share this. It's this part that you want to keep private, and, um, and you don't want to share that. This is the thing you want to keep in your safe, or you want to bury, and, and keep private, hence the name private key. Okay. I will leave it there. Uh, I hope this provides value for people.